Hi, this is Christopher Perrin with another word about the liberal arts. The liberal arts, we've heard of the liberal arts, but many of us, despite perhaps being told that we have studied the liberal arts, cannot name them. So what are the liberal arts? Are they English, philosophy, and English? Are they philosophy, philosophy, and philosophy? Are they English, philosophy, and history? No. No, those are not the liberal arts. Traditionally, there were seven liberal arts, and here they are. Grammar, logic, and rhetoric, the first three of the liberal arts. These three together were called the trivium. The trivium in Latin means the threefold way, the threefold path. And these arts represented the threefold path along the way to the mastery of your tongue, your lingua, the mastery of language. They were the verbal arts or the language arts. Grammar is derived from a Greek word, gramma, which simply means letter. It's learning your letters. It's learning how to read and interpret texts and language, to read with clarity and to write with clarity to be able to understand accurately any text that uh, comes your way is to be just a master grammar and to speak and write accurately yourself. It's to learn how language is structured and works across all human languages. The parts of speech come to mind, of which there are eight, and which I will not enumerate for you at this moment, but a noun and a verb and an adjective would be three of them. And then there is logic, which is another art of language that differs from grammar. It is the art of correct reasoning, and by implication, incorrect reasoning. What does it mean for human beings to make an argument, say, using a syllogism that means with logic? And a syllogism involves uh, two premises that lead to a conclusion, and if it's properly constructed, lead inevitably to a conclusion. That's logic, the art of correct reasoning. It's the study of one's own mind. Rhetoric is another art, another verbal art, and it's the art of persuasive speaking and writing. Aristotle defined it as observing all the available means of persuasion because we can win an argument and still lose the person. So what does it mean to say, instruct and move and delight one's hearers? Cicero would say those three things are the essence of rhetoric. We need to be able to instruct, delight our hearers, please them, and move them. That's the study of rhetoric. These are the three liberal arts of language. And of course, if there were seven, the arte septum liberales, there need to be four more. And indeed, there is the quadrivium. And the quadrivium contains the four mathematical arts that have to do with the mastery of number, and they were arithmetic, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. Only humans do calculations. Only humans use words and speech. Now, some may argue that some animals do speak, but the humans qualitatively are in a different order when it comes to the use of language. And only human beings do math. <laughs> and mathematics involve arithmetic, which is discrete number, learning how to count and add and subtract and multiply and divide. And geometry, which is, involves discrete shapes, how shapes are formed and what the mathematical relationships between numbers and figures are when it comes to shapes. And astronomy involves the study of, of shapes that are in motion. Think about the, the planets that move, and it becomes the precursor to our modern-day physics, which studies shapes in motion. And music involves the study of numbers in motion, because music does involve vibrating sound waves and all kinds of interesting harmonic ratios mathematically considered that are proportionate and very interesting to, the, to a, the mathematical mind, as well as pleasing to our ears. Music has been called by some the incarnation of mathematics. We know that you like 
math because you love music. Well, there you have it. It's a short summary. But these seven liberal arts were considered to be the arts that helped make the person, uh, that helped to qualify a human being to become the fullest version of himself. And after he had been made by these arts, he became an artist himself, liberated to serve others by creatively making things out of words and numbers. Well, that's my brief summary of the seven liberal arts. I hope it's been helpful to you. Thanks for viewing.